In a previous video, I showed you how easy it is to install an extra panel on top of your trailer. And since that time, I've thought of even an easier way. <laughs> and uh, today's video, we're going to be installing these two panels on a, on a 7x14 cargo trailer. And I've eliminated all of the drilling. And, well, anyways, you gotta, you got to check this out. These are two 180 watt panels that were supplied to me by Bouge RV for a review, but it's just in the nick of time because we actually needed a pair of panels. So we're going to be reviewing these panels, testing them out and seeing how they do and showing you how easy it is to install them. Because so many people tell me, well, that's above their capabilities or uh, they uh, don't know enough about it. They don't know how to use tools or whatever. but. This is really simple. Just about anyone can install these panels. And I just want to show you how easy it is because, and then some people say, oh, they don't want to drill holes in their roof. This is going to involve one hole. That's it. Now, the first thing you want to do with any solar panel when you receive it is, of course, to test it and make sure it works before you go installing it on your roof. could be damaged from shipping or something. On the back of every solar panel, there's going to be a tag like this. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to test the open circuit voltage and we're going to test the short circuit current. On this one, the open circuit voltage is 23.84 volts and the short circuit current is 9.57 amps. Now that's under standard test conditions which we don't have here. That would be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, under um, a perfect bright noon sun or factory conditions. Well, here it's about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. The sun is uh, not exactly high in the sky. So we're going to see, we should come to something close to this or something that tells us that this panel is indeed working. To do a test like this, you'll just need some sort of a multimeter. Uh, available at your local Walmart store <laughs> or on Amazon.com, but it needs to be able to read as well as volts. It also needs to be able to read DC amps, which this one will do uh, up to 10 amp max. Now we shouldn't be getting close to 10 amps in today's sun, uh, in this morning sun, but we'll, we'll, we'll test it out here and just see how, how well we do. First of all, let's read the voltage. These MC4 connectors are marked positive and negative. So the black one goes in the negative and the red one goes in the positive. And you see it's reading 23.0 volts. That's excellent. Because the um, it was 23.8 for the open circuit voltage. So with this morning sun, yeah, this panel's working just fine. Now let's check the amperage. To check the amperage, I just move this over into the 10 amp plug-in right there. And I set this over here on the AC or the uh, amperage DC. If it was AC, it'd be a squiggly line. This is straight, so this would be amperage over here on this side. Okay, once again, it's just do the positive in the positive one, the red one and the positive one, and there there can be a little bit of a spark when you do this. So just, it's not going to be much, uh, but just expect it. There was a spark. You can see it when I put it in there. It does spark because it, you are measuring current here. 9.46 amps. Super. Now we need to check the other one, the other panel. Okay, we're all set up to check the amperage. We'll just do that first. And 9.18. Of course, the angle of the panel might be a little different than the last one, but that's perfect. We're doing good. Let's check that open circuit voltage. 23 volts. Perfect. 
Well, now we know these panels are okay. Let's start the installation. To figure wattage on these panels, all you do is multiply the amps times the volts. And if you do that on what I just showed you, these 180 watt panels are actually putting out more like 207 watts. So they're easily meeting their rating. And by the way, these uh, Bouge RV panels are rated at, uh, they have a conversion rate of 21.2%. So that's real high for the industry. So these are good panels. Well, in my last video, I used these exact same mounts, only I drilled them. And my reason for drilling them and screwing the, these to the panel was so that the panel could be easily removed in case it got hail damage or it got defective or it, for some reason it quit working or I just wanted to replace it. Um, so I drilled these and that ended up being a, a lot of work. But I've come up with a different method of doing this now, and I want to share it with you. We're going to use adhesive to do the entire job, but it's the way we're going to use the adhesive that's going to be a little different here, and you got to be careful with it. And if you do it the way I say, you'll be able to replace the panel if you have to do so. Now on the bottom of these, this is a textured surface where it glues down to the roof of your RV. But on the inside, it's pretty shiny. So I'm just going to scuff this up a little bit with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to take each one of these mounts. I'm just going to scuff it up just real briefly, just to make a rougher surface. Now this isn't a long drawn out sanding job. It is literally just that on each surface. That's it. Just like in the last project I showed you, I'm using Sikaflex 252. I absolutely trust Sikaflex products because I've been using them for years, uh, originally in uh, boat repair and uh, boat building. But uh, when this stuff goes on, it doesn't come off. Now that brings up another thing, wear gloves. And wear your best clothing. Something you don't mind throwing away. Because if you get this stuff on you, it's not coming off. Well, my, my concern on the last panel and the reason I drilled it was like I mentioned, I wanted to be able to get the panel off again. And what I figured out is that as long as I don't get any adhesive between the bottom of the panel and here, I'll be okay. So as long as there's only adhesive on the sides, we should be all right. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. It doesn't take a lot of this stuff. So if I just lay a bead like that, a little more than halfway up, we're going to be all right. And then position it and just push it straight on like that. I call that installed. I'm going to put some tape here just to keep it from moving. And uh, the reason I laid this panel on its face like this was to make this easier so I'm not having to slide these underneath. This is an overnight cure. So it's going to have to sit here overnight. That's one. You can look down on the sides here and make sure it's up as flush as it's going to go. Just down in the cracks. Same thing over here. Be real careful on the corners to make sure that they're not askew in any way. 
look down both sides, make sure they're tight. Now I almost made a mistake, but I caught myself in the nick of time. Be sure and put some furring strips underneath the panel so that any glue that any adhesive that squeezes out doesn't glue your panel to your garage floor. Just put a little piece of wood underneath just to hold them up a little bit. Okay, that's one panel done and that literally only took 10 minutes. Now I'm going to do the second panel. Okay, now this adhesive is really tacky. So it's not creeping around or sliding around or anything once you put it down. And I know where the middle is because I'm just going by these holes right here in the panel. That's the middle, in case you're wondering. Okay, both panels are done. 20 minutes worth of work. And now they have to sit overnight to let that adhesive cure. Then tomorrow, we'll put them on a the roof. Okay, that part turned out really well. Those look good. Now we just got to get them loaded into the car and take them on over to install them. Okay, the panels are loaded into the back and we're ready to go. We're only going a couple of blocks. Over on the right here is an existing panel and we're not sure what we're going to do with that one. It's, uh, it, it, the size doesn't match up with these new panels. Uh, but anyways, this is a new Bouge RV panel here, 180 watt. And this is the second one, 180 watt. And we're laying it out right now to see exactly where they got to go. And then we're going to carefully mark that position. This is the hardest part, figuring out exactly where to put the panels. But these are where they're going. All we got to do is just put them back down in this same exact spot. We're ready for the next step. Well, I mentioned being able to swap these panels out in case you, uh, something goes wrong or you break one or something like that. And that's because <laughs> the, the reason I did it the way I did it, let me show you, is because I can just take an, uh, a utility knife and just cut right down through here and cut all these open and lift this panel out of these mounts after they're glued down. Because I was very careful not to let any of this Sikaflex get underneath this panel. It's only on the sides. Okay, then next thing to do is flip this over. Okay. And just, yeah, you guys go ahead and lay it down carefully. Flip it over. Flip it to me? Yeah, and try not to undo the wires there. The tape on the wires. Upside down. Yep. Okay. Let go, let go of it. Easy peasy. Okay. Now watch how I do this one. And uh, uh, especially this being the leading edge, I want plenty right next to the edge so it squishes out the front. Plenty on the very edge, okay? And let's just go do them all. We got plenty of this stuff. There's a whole other tube. You can't use too much. Well, I suppose you could. It's not cheap. Unlike when you're going around your bathtub, this doesn't have to be that neat. 
perfect. Just enough to do this panel and that tube. Okay. okay, now it's time to place that panel. Now, should I be on this side? Yeah. Okay. So let's try to just lift it as much as possible. And just place it as carefully as possible, okay? Got, got it back, Lynn? Okay, I got my end, Brian, real good. Yep. If you line up your side, my side will be all right. Okay, I'm okay. good. I'm good. All right. Okay, just a little down pressure. And go ahead and squeeze her down some more. Okay, that's one panel installed. Time to do this one. All right, goop them up. And you want to put it on thick to allow for any unevenness in the roof too, of which these roofs are plenty uneven. Okay, is everybody ready? Yeah. Everybody looking good? Yeah. All right. That's it. All we gotta do now is hook up the wires. Can't wait to see how they read. We got nice bright sun today, so let's try it out. So Beck Lynn, you can loosen up those wires and uh, take the tape off and kind of run them out to the side. And then you gotta find a way to get down off the roof. <laughs> okay, now that adhesive does have a 24 hour cure time, so you don't wanna be driving down the highway until the day after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Yeah, that's correct. Til there you go. Okay. Okay, let me go get the other one. Do I? Yep. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you just concentrate on staying out of the white stuff, okay? Get the ladder on the other side. Okay, now we're getting ready to hook up these two new panels and this third panel over here is going to be totally disconnected from the system. So we'll just be testing the two new panels. Okay, on this trailer the existing wire just goes through right here. On yours you'll probably be using a gland like the one I sh like this one right here. Now this is called a gland and this is how the wires go from your solar panel down through the roof of your trailer and into the interior. The best way to stick this on your roof is using this 3M high bond tape. This stuff is, you put this on and it stays on. It's kind of a black colored thin foam and you peel off this red side to make it stick. And you would, it's a two side sticky tape. So you would attach that around the four sides Put your wires through, have your wires coming in and going down through the roof and feed them down through the roof until you're ready to stick it on the roof and just push it on one time. Once you push it on, it's not coming off. Then you would follow around that. You would follow around the edge with some of that Sikaflex to, to finish sealing it up. These are how we hook up the panels. Now this is, this is designed for three rooftop panels and uh, I, think, I think we may be replacing this 160 up here with another 180 exactly like the one, the two that we just installed. So we, we're prepared for that.
So all we need to do is hook this other end over here where it goes down through the roof, like this. And this one like this. Now these are both wired into this wire here. I know it's attached to this panel right now, but this is the one that goes down through the roof over here, okay? Now all I need to do is connect up the wires from the panels we just installed. And you can't hook them up wrong. Well, just as long as you're hooking them up in parallel, but... But um, if you just come directly off the panels and directly to the Y connector, you're not gonna be making a mistake. All right. Okay, these panels are now hooked up to the controller down below. We can go down and take a look and see what they're doing. Okay, for neatening up these wires, um, we're not gonna drill any holes through the roof for that either. And I'll put a little clip in on how I uh, attached them to the roof on the last panel install I did. So you can see that right here. Well, these are what I use to secure the wiring to the roof. These are called cable clamps. And uh, I just buy them at the hardware store and they snap down, you, you push them down and they, they click, they'll lock down. The only thing is they come with a indoor uh, double-sided foam on the back and I like to replace that with a high strength uh, double-sided tape. Now this tape is, uh, this one's made by 3M. Scotch makes it, Loctite makes it, they all have a red backing on it. And they'll be called certain names like high bond or high strength or extreme, things like that, names like that. But basically, I just peel this tape off the back and put that tape on. Just like that. like that. Peel the red backing off and stick them on the roof and uh, they won't come off. They'll hold all that cable, all that wiring in place. This up here is fuse box voltage right now. This is battery voltage right now. Right now you see these panels are putting in 22.1 volts. Uh, it's got 14.4 volts going to the battery, which agrees with this up here. And it's showing only 1.1 amps going in because these batteries are 100% charged up. But yeah, you can read the voltage, 22.2, that's exactly what they're supposed to be. And state of charge, 99%. Yeah, so, but yeah, we're, we got a working system. It's working great. And this trailer is also equipped with a Bouge RV refrigerator. That's the uh, 50, 50 quart size. And it works well too, doesn't it guys? Yes, it's very nice. I just got home, but I realized I need to clarify something for you. Not everyone uh, understands the total solar system. Uh, I showed you an easier way to install panels just now, but just to clarify, I just want to show you the rest of the system here real fast. This is on my own trailer now. Coming through the ceiling, you'll have two wires. It doesn't matter how many panels you have on your roof. They're all gonna connect in a Y connector, you know, two, three, four, five different uh, connectors up there will all go into one each. One positive, which would be the red one, and one negative. This is what comes through your ceiling, and it comes down, and it'll go, it'll go to a controller, something like this Renogy controller here. So it's really simple to hook these up. The two wires come down off the panels and they go in and they, on this one, they connect underneath, positive, negative. From there, there's a positive and negative that goes down to your 
battery. In this case, is that uh, Renogy lithium battery here. And, and that's it. One on the positive side and one back on the negative side. And at that point, you're all hooked up. It's just a matter of screwing it to the wall or something, you know, to fasten everything down and fastening the wires down tight. But the whole installation is actually very simple. You don't have to be a, a genius to do this. You, all you do is hook the positive to positive and the negative to negative and away you go. And it's all plainly marked. So there you have it. You don't have to drill a bunch of holes in your roof to mount solar panels. It can be done very easily. And I showed you how, just use the adhesive and use the adhesive mounts. This whole install only took us a total of maybe an hour to actually having them installed on the roof. Now, the only thing left for us to do is to neaten up the wiring and this job is done. So thank you, Bouge RV, for supplying these panels. And by the way, if you're interested in these panels, Check the link below and it'll be a direct link to Bouge RV and you'll get any sale prices. And also if uh, you may see a discount code, uh, usually it says gone again or something like that. Look for that in the video description down below this video. Hey, I hope you people liked the video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you around.